Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. Today I'm tying a Ryakofila Caddis Lava representation. The hook in the vise is a size 12 sedge hook from RX, but anything with a curved shank will do. I'm using two spools of UTC 70 in black, one for tying and one for ribbing. To weight the fly, some thin lead wire. And to represent the gills and breathers, some grey ostrich hell. The body material is glass rib from Saibai in olive green. This is a thin plastic strand with a nice bit of stretch to it. To represent the thorax cover, I'm using some thin skin. For the thorax itself, some black seals fur dubbing. And finally, to represent the legs, some dyed black pheasant tail fibres. Now let's get started. I'm tying in my thread just behind the hook eye, carrying it back a few turns to secure, and snipping away the excess. This fly is designed to sit with the hook point upwards on the bottom of the river, so when I'm adding the weight I want to keep it underneath the fly or on top of the hook shank as we see it in the vise at the moment. I've tacked in some lead wire on top of the hook shank and I'm doubling it over and tying it down and this is going to create a little weighted keel for the fly. I'm happy with the position so we can trim away the excess just by breaking it off. Make sure everything's nice and secure. And the next job is going to be to tie in the ribbing material, which is simply another spool of thread. I'm going to double that over and secure everything down the length of the hook shank. I'm using a bobbin with the thread on it. I think it's a little bit easier later on as we're wrapping the rib. I'm going to secure that down the length of the body and park it out of the way on my materials clip. To make it easier to tie in the glass rib, I've used a lighter to gently melt one end and pull it a little bit flatter. This just makes it easier to tack in and secure with a few tight thread wraps. Now I'm pulling the glass rib really nice and tight and it thins it out a lot and I'm tying it down being careful to keep it on top of the hook shank and this is going to help me get the body shape I want. I'm being quite firm with my thread, you can see how the vise is moving. I'm going to tack that all the way down the length of the body using the curve of the hook to help build up a natural body shape. With everything secure, I can park the glass rib out of the way on my materials clip as well. Here, I've taken two strands of ostrich hull, and where I've stripped them off the stem of the feather, those little fuzzy feet are going to make fantastic representations of the breathers at the end of the fly. So I'm tying one in on my side, going to turn the vise upside down, and repeat on the other side. These same bits of ostrich hull, we're going to double back in a minute, and they're going to be tied in down the side of the fly, to represent the gills. On the naturals it's got these little fuzzy gills that run down the side and this is a really good technique for doing that. And making sure that I'm happy with the position for everything, running the thread back to the tail of the fly and then we can come in and double back and tack down those ostrich hulls. That one's misbehaving a little but we get there in the end and tie everything down. I've taken a bit of time to build up a smooth underbody because the next job is to wrap that glass rib. I'm being quite firm here and pulling it tight and gradually loosening off tension as I come up the length of the fly in order to build up a little bit more taper on top of what we've made from the thread. I'm happy with the length. The naturals have a fairly long body and a fairly short stubby thorax so this is perfect. To secure everything I'm making some wraps over and under and then we can pull it tight and snip away the excess. And making sure that everything's nicely secured down. And we're actually finished with this bobbin now. So we can come in with our whip finisher and tie off. So this next bit's quite tricky, both to tie and to film. But what I'm going to do is use that second spool of thread and work it up through the grooves in the body that we've made between that glass rib and on each turn, on each side, I'm going to catch in those strands of ostrich hull, trying to keep them neatly on the side of the fly. And this is going to represent the gills that run down the side of the insect. From the top down view, it's a bit easier to see, but I'm following the grooves in that body from where we wrapped the glass rib, and each side just catching in those ostrich hulls. This is much easier to do if you've got a rotary vise and can reposition the hook easily. So we've taken it down the length of the body, and I'll make some wraps to secure, 
and then we can break away or trim away the excess hurl. With everything secure, I can give a little bit of a brush and get those fibres sticking out to the side nicely. I can carry the thread back forward, and then I'm turning the hook upside down, or rather right way up in the vise, so I can tie in the thorax cover. I'm using a skinny little strip of thin skin, and I'm going to tack that in by a point and carry it back down towards the body. This is a little bit awkward because of where the hook point sits. I don't want to put holes in the thin skin, because otherwise when I stretch it out to make the thorax cover, it risks tearing. I'm just going to check for length in a second, and I'm not quite happy with that. I want to take it back a little bit further, just a couple of millimetres. So using touching turns, I'm going to walk that back using the stretch of the material and keeping it nice and centred on the hook. With the thorax cover in place, we can turn the fly upside down again. And now I'm going to add some dubbing to make the thorax. I'm using some black seal's fur here. I do like using seal's fur for dubbing. It packs down nice and tightly. And as the naturals here don't have a great big bushy thorax, that's perfect for me. I've put on one pinch, not quite big enough for me, so I'm going to add on a second pinch of seal's fur and build up the thorax a little bit further. So for the legs and feet on this fly, I'm going to be using that black dyed pheasant tail that we saw earlier. And much like we did with the ostrich hurl, I'm going to use the fuzzy bits that are left over from when you strip the fibres off the stem to my advantage, because here they're going to make some fantastic feet. I've taken a little bundle of three fibres, and keeping them quite short, the naturals have little stubby legs that come off the thorax. I'm going to tie them in on the side of the hook. Turning the hook back over to tie the other side. And here you can see how they come off the stem, trimming off those long straggly bits and leaving the, leaving the feet. Here I'm tying in the second bundle. I'm going to try and keep them nice and even and tack them down. I'm checking the length and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to make another tight wrap to secure and then trim away the excess. Doing this one at a time, one or two at a time, just to make sure that they're nice and short and won't get in the way of the hook eye. The fly's nearly finished. The last job to do is to bring over that thorax cover and tie it down with some tight wraps behind the hook eye. I'm going to pull that back and secure everything off. Now I'm coming in with my whip finisher, making a few tight whip finishes to secure everything down. You can trim away the thread and then trim away the excess of the thorax cover. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a really interesting fly to tie and the technique for doing the gills is very, very versatile and works well for other caddises as well. But there you have it, that's my Rhyokophila caddis larva. Thanks for watching.